PettyCalc BC, welcome to our videos today uh, for section 8.6, um, the ratio test and the root test. And I'm going to do two separate videos. So um, you probably know that already because there were two links in the folder. I know. Um, this one is going to be on the ratio test, and then the next video is on the root test. Uh, the reason they're, they're in two parts, um, I'm, I'm kind of working, recording these in around the um, uh, bear time. And uh, there we go. And um, I want to be able to uh, stop the video in about 15 minutes uh, for bear time. So hence, I'm going to do two. And I figured that, uh, that way I could separate them out. So uh, the test that I'm going to look at today. Uh, so now that we've, we've, you know, we've come this far, it's time to start really thinking about, OK, how do we prove convergence for more general, in more general cases? And um, these two tests provide us with some other ways uh, that are especially handy to deal with, um, you know, with like the integral test, uh, you know, comparison, uh, P-series, geometrics, alternating series. And we've talked about different ways to show convergence. Um, these are ones that we might use, you know, when none of those other ones work. And so um, the ratio test basically says this, says, okay, uh, let's let uh, this uh, be a series. Um, with non-zero terms. Okay, and so um, the series converges absolutely. Okay, so again, there's that idea of absolute convergence. Um, if the following is true, the limit as n approaches infinity, infinity, well, you get the idea. The absolute value, okay, a sub n plus one over a sub n is less than one. And let me fix that a little bit there, just so we're not confused. That the, the, the n plus one is the entire subscript. Okay. So yeah, if if we take this limit and we get um, a value less than uh, one, our series converges. A sub n diverges, can you guess? <laughs> if our limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n is greater than one. Um, so there you go, uh, that's divergent. So if we have our, our, our limit is less than one, we have convergence. If our limit is greater than one, we have divergence. Some of you very savvy uh, calculus students are probably wondering, well, well what do we know? Um, yeah, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n, what happens if it equals one? Well, then the test, then the ratio test is inconclusive. <laughs> okay, so yeah, basically, if you get exactly one, uh, well, so sorry, um, we we don't know anything. Uh, yeah, we don't know if it converges or diverges if it equals to one. Okay, so let's take a look at an example or two here. Um, the uh, very first one I want to look at um, is uh, this one. Um, it's the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And we're going to have 2 to the n over n factorial. And right away, you're going to see why this test is so important. Um, because we've talked about factorials in the past, and now you see, uh-oh, I have a series, and it's got a factorial in it. Uh, I know there's no way to integrate it. I know this is not alternating. Uh, so yeah, so how am I going to show convergence or divergence? And that's where the ratio test comes in. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the ratio here. So what is the limit as n approaches infinity? 
Okay, absolute value. Well, the, the n plus one term is two to the n plus one over n plus one factorial. And that is divided by the nth term. Well, that's two to the n over n factorial. There we go. And now we just want to evaluate this limit. Um, you're probably looking at that and going, well, hey, that's handy. That's a zero over zero case. So uh, can we just L'Hopital's rule it? And the answer is no, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, there is no way to derive the factorial. Uh, so um, unfortunately for us, yeah, rewriting this is like two to the x over x factorial and doing this kind of thing. Um, yeah, we don't have it. There is no factorial for a continuous function, first of all. Uh, and secondly, yeah, you can't derive it. There's there's no slope there. So, so we're, we're stuck. Or are we? Of course not. Um, we're not stuck. We know that uh, through the miracle of algebra, when we're dividing two fractions, well, we're really just multiplying by reciprocals, right? Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. Um, what does n plus 1 mean when it's the exponent? And what is n plus 1 factorial going to look like? Okay. And then, so um, I don't know what's going on with my trackpad, guys. It's tracking very strangely today. So I don't know if it's very, very slow or what, but um, okay. So let's, first of all, let's let's get a clean slate here. What do we mean by n plus one on the, on the exponent, right? Like if I have a to the n plus one, right? What, when do I add powers, right? Well, that'd be when I'm multiplying, right? So two to the n plus one is two to the n times two. Okay. And I, I also want you to think this one for a second. Okay, remember, remember what factorial means, right? Like, you know, five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. Or think about it this way. Five times four factorial, right? Sure, because those four terms, that's four factorial. So n plus one factorial is n plus one times n factorial. Now, thinking back to the previous slide, you're probably like, ah, I see where you're going with this, Mr. Ray. Of course you do, you're Calc BC students, you're very smart. I can't fool you. Look at this. Rewrite that first fraction, that's two times two to the n. And n plus one factorial is n plus one times n factorial. And look at that. You see all that nice cancellation that happens when we rewrite it like that? Yeah, it's beautiful. The two to the n will cancel. The n factorials will cancel. And now our limit is a lot easier to evaluate, isn't it? It's the limit as n approaches infinity of what? Well, it's two over n plus one. And what is the limit as n approaches infinity of two over n plus one? It's zero. Last I checked, zero was definitely less than one. So when the limit of the n plus one term over the nth term, that ratio is less than one, we have a convergent series. So our series converges, more importantly, converges absolutely. There we go. A great example of how the um, ratio test uh, gives you uh, a result of, of convergence. All right, let's try another one here. Um, Oh, I got one. Uh, so let's do this. Let's do the, uh, the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going to hit this. Hey, Mr. Ray, we don't need the ratio test for this. This is a P series. I know it is. Okay. I want to show you what we mean by the ratio test is inconclusive. Okay. Because 1 over n squared, if I take a look at the ratio one over 
n plus one squared over one over n oops, squared, there we go. Um, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n plus one squared, which is one. Our ratio test is inconclusive. Now we know the original series is, is convergent. I get that because it was a convergent p-series. So what happens when the ratio test fails like this or is inconclusive, we have to resort to some other means. Okay, we have to resort to, in this case, a p-series. Uh, notice that we would have gotten the same result had I selected the uh, divergent harmonic one over n, right? Because that we get the same result. The limit as n approaches infinity, one over n plus one divided by one over n is the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus one, which is also one. There's one that's inconclusive as well, but it's a divergent series. So you can see getting a result of one, it, it doesn't tell you one way or the other. In, in, the, in the first case there, the blue one, it was a convergent P-series. In the second case, the purple one here was a divergent P-series. So yeah, unfortunately for us, getting a, a limit equal to one uh, doesn't give us a whole lot of information. And therein lies the problem with the inconclusive bit. All right. Hmm, you savvy calculus students out there are probably thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, we've seen a convergent one. We've seen a inconclusive ones. I wonder what's next. <laughs> All right, how about n to the nth power? Weird, over n factorial. Okay. Um, so uh, this one, what, well, let's just go through the ratio test because whenever there's a factorial in there, I gotta be honest, guys. When I see a factorial in there, I'm, pro I'm throwing out a lot of my earlier stuff. I am throwing out alternating series unless there's a negative one in there. I'm throwing out P series. I'm throwing out integral test. Um, you know, I, there's just, the, the presence of the factorial takes away a lot of what we would think of like traditional calculus type stuff, you know, derivatives and integrals and stuff because you can't derive or integrate with that function. So that will probably shortcut me to some of the other uh, tests that we're talking about. And the uh, ratio test that we're talking about now is a great way to handle those factorials. Um, n plus one to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial divided by n to the n over n factorial, all of that in absolute value. All right, so multiply by our reciprocal and what do we get? Well, let's see here. We've got n plus one to the n plus one power. In other words, we have n plus one to the first times n plus one to the nth power over n plus one factorial, which that's n plus one times n factorial. Then we have n factorial over n to the nth power. And you actually get some pretty handy cancellation here as well. The n factorials cancel out and this n plus ones cancel out. And so we get this. The limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one over n, all of that to the nth power. Recognize it yet? Let me rewrite it. Limit as n approaches infinity of one plus one over n to the nth power. Now, do you recognize it? Um, you maybe do, maybe you don't. Um, but uh, that limit is actually E. Okay, yeah, so, all right. Uh, you might be wondering, okay, how did he get E? And I, I get it. So let's take a quick second and review how that is E because that's probably gonna bug some of you. So we'll do that real quick. 
I just don't want this to continue to, to eat at your brain how that worked out. And um, it may not be one that you're familiar with. So let's take a quick peek at it. Uh, I'm going to do it with X, just go, go in the way back machine. Like it's just X approaching infinity and it's one plus one over X to the X power. Uh, just because the, the, the method I'm going to use to solve it going to be um, a L'Hopital's rule here in just a second. So here's what I want you to think about. Um, I'm going to let that equal to uh, Y. Now, there's a, there's a method to my madness here, just bear with me. Um, because I, I have that exponent that's a variable, but I also have a variable down in the base. And when we have that, that exponent in, in both places, a lot of times that, um, that invokes a logarithm. And so what I'm gonna do is take the natural log on both sides here. So I'm gonna say the natural log of y equals the natural log of the limit as x approaches infinity of one plus one over x to the x power. Now, I apologize. I don't remember the theorem number off the top of my head, but it says that the natural log of the limit is the limit of the natural log. So I can bring that natural log function inside my limit. And so now I have the limit as x approaches infinity, it's supposed to be an m, there we go, of the natural log of one plus one over x to the x power. And there I can invoke my logarithm rule. I can bring that x down in front, make it a coefficient x times natural log of one plus one over x. Now, you're probably saying, well, that doesn't look like a L'Hopital's rule or anything like that to me yet. And you're right, it's not until we do this. And this is the real genius part of this proof. It's the natural log of one plus one over x over one over x. Yeah, multiplying by x is the same thing as dividing by one over x. And now notice, if x goes to infinity, what happens in the denominator, pretty obvious, goes to zero, but in the numerator, it becomes the natural log of one, which is also zero. This is a zero over zero case. Yeah. So L'Hopital's rule applies. And so when I apply L'Hopital's rule, Okay. What do we get? Well, you get the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of the numerator is a u prime over u, right? So it's a negative one over x squared over one plus one over x divided by the derivative of the denominator, which is negative uh, one over x squared right? The one over x squared is cancel and we get the limit as x approaches infinity of one plus one over x, which is of course one. And you're like, I thought you said it was e. Well, remember what's on the left-hand side of this whole thing, right, is the natural log of y. So if the natural log of y is equal to one, then y is equal to e. So this equals E, there we go. So uh, yeah, uh, that one is a, a proof that sometimes we see in AB, sometimes we don't. Um, but I knew that if I just put that up there and everybody was like, whoa, where'd that come from? Uh, I wanna make sure we get, get that down. So yeah, it's just a little trick with um, L'Hopital's rule. Well, what do you know about E? hopefully you know it's greater than one. And so uh, at the end of the day, what it tells me is that my series here diverges. Um, by the ratio test. All right. Um, now, some of you might have been thinking, well, couldn't we have done that with the nth term divergence test? And yes, you could have. The tricky bit to the nth term divergence test is you have to prove that that ratio n to the n over n factorial doesn't go to zero as n goes to infinity. And so then it's kind of like, well, who wins the race, right? Is it n to the n or is it n factorial? Which one's going to get to infinity faster? Um, it turns out it's n to the n. Um, the, expo the exponential function is much faster than the uh, factorial function. Um, 
even though factorial gets big really fast as well. Uh, it, it's it's not, but there, again, there's no easy way to prove that because we can't go to a L'Hopital's or anything like that with that factorial function in there. So uh, I, I like the ratio or the, the ratio, the ratio test a whole lot better uh, for this case. So there we go. That's the ratio test, guys. I need to. Uh, Go over to my bear time now, just in case I have some students, but uh, here it is at just one more time. You can find all of this stuff um, in here uh, on, uh, we're in page six, and these all started on page 597. And so that's where you'll find the beginning of the ratio test. Check out the second video here for the root test. Um, if nobody shows up airtime, I'll be making it here very shortly, but it is going to be a separate video. So, all right. Thank you guys so much. And I look forward to seeing you in class on, uh, on a Thursday. All right. Bye, everybody.